2013 was a pretty poor year for Microsoft. Xbox completely bottled the console war right off the bat with their disastrous Xbox One showcase, and stocks in Microsoft went down, causing the company to lose over $32 billion. Old Bill Bill was surely quaking in his boots at the prospect of his company losing any more money. He must have been thinking back to when times were simpler, like when he was hanging out with The Rock, and when he was busy running stop signs in 1977, like a true top G. Everything was looking bleak for this multi-gazillion megacorp, but they had a plan up their sleeves. They were going to publish a zombie game by a small indie company and distribute it on their Xbox Live Arcade service and recuperate all that lost 32 bazillion dollars. Alright, that didn't happen. Well, some of it did. An indie dev did create a zombie game, and that zombie game was State of Decay, an Xbox arcade game that gave you the content of a AAA game for the low price of 20 pieces of gold. Undead Labs was founded in 2009, deciding to team up with Microsoft Game Studios to make zombie games. I mean, with a name like Undead Labs, you can't really start making dating sims, can you? Undead Labs have only worked on three games, all from the same series, State of Decay, State of Decay 2, and State of Decay 3. This video will only be talking about the first one though, as 2 deserves its own video, and 3's not even out yet. In my humble opinion, State of Decay is a good zombie game. It's not the best ever, because as we all know, those Walking Dead mobile games are the best ever. But it has a lot of good aspects, and you can tell Undead Labs put a lot of heart and other organs into it. And I feel like it's a game that people tend to forget about. Like many classic Xbox arcade games, it became sort of a cult hit, and eventually sold tons of copies. The game takes place in the fictional town of Trumbull Valley, a small town that has been cordoned off by the military after a mysterious virus spreads throughout it, turning all the hillbilly yeah, moonshiners into zombies. In true Xbox Arcade fashion, State of Decay plays with the typical zombie game formula. Though the game has a story, it's very loose with how it's presented, and a surprising amount of freedom is given to the player, which lets you play the game however you want to a certain degree. Wanna storm through the story? Sure, go for it. Want to fuck that off and just piss about killing zombies all day? Fair enough, do that instead. The gameplay is very simple, yet addictive, and while some aspects were clearly overlooked, the game is still solid all these years later. State of Decay's intro is particularly interesting, as it acts as a sneak peek of what to expect from the gameplay, while also being a tiny bit misleading with the story. We follow friends Marcus and Ed, who have just come back from a fishing trip, only to discover that their cute little town has gone to shit. We take control of Marcus as he skulks around a nearby campsite and smashes in the heads of deceased townsfolk. Eventually you come across some survivors and are told to survey the surrounding area and clear out some buildings. After enough searching you come across another survivor called Maya, and head back to the safe house to tell your new friends all about your adventure. Oh, they're all dead. Ed gets bit, and a mysterious voice calls to you from beyond the radio, asking you to come join her community. Ah, oh, what a nice lady. I could never get annoyed at such a kind NPC. Looks like we've got some preparations to make. We'd better start gathering supplies now. The runners have hit some trouble. Update on the runners. We still have some runners out there that need help. There's a zombie horde in the way. They're gonna need you to make a path. Can you clear a path for them? Then you hit the road, try to jump this bridge, crash a car then scramble around for a new car until you finally make your way to your new home, and this is where State of Decay truly begins. If I had to describe this game, I'd use the word sandbox. State of Decay has a lot of mechanics that make what could have been a repetitive gameplay loop feel boring, interesting, and while it does eventually start to feel a bit samey, most of the time the gameplay keeps you hooked. The fates of most of the characters are in the hands of the player, and you can pretty much choose how you want to go about beating or not beating the game. It's also a very welcoming survival game, kind of like a my first survival game. Some survival games are nice and friendly, and other survival games make you feel like it's a 9 to 5, and I'd say State of Decay is one of the friendlier ones. That's not to say the game is too easy, because the game does get difficult and overwhelming at times, but it's more fun than stressful. Survival of you and your people is the top priority in State of Decay, and you can't accomplish that by sitting around doing fuck all. You've got to get out there and show the zombies who's boss until it turns night, then you run home with your tail in between your legs. Keeping yourself armed with the best weapons and making sure you have plenty of supplies to not only sustain your base, but actually upgrade it, is key. At the beginning of the game you are given a home base. Over the course of the game the location of your home base changes, but the thing that is consistent with all of them is that you need supplies to keep them running, and the people inside of them alive. To sustain your home base you will need fuel, building materials, food, medical supplies, and bullets. These resources can be found in the many abandoned buildings you come across in Trumbull valley. Abandoned in the sense that there's no living humans, because there's always a shit ton of zombies either in them or around them. The more resources 
you have, the more upgrades you can give to your base that grant your survivors XP in different skills. Outposts are also very helpful as they act as mini bases, making it easier to keep your home base safe, and depending on which outpost you set up, can also decrease the consumption of some of your resource pools. On a more personal level, you also need to find certain resources that help benefit you, like weapons, food, meds, ammo, and other handy tools that keep the zombies at bay. Most survivors are found already holding weapons, but this doesn't mean you have to settle for these base tier weapons, as there's plenty to find in the world that make the zombies think twice about being undead arseholes. Finding loot can be pretty difficult, but actually getting the loot home is a completely different ball game. Carrying too much causes you to become over encumbered, and depending on who you're playing as, this can be damning for your stamina. Luckily the map is littered with cars, so most of the time you can bring your gear back in style, unless you completely fuck up your car before you get there. Stamina is also a big part of the gameplay, as losing all of it could cost you your life. Food acts as a stamina boost which is helpful if you're running from a particularly interested horde. Eventually though, your character will get tired, which means you will have to recruit someone to hold the mantle of main character. At the beginning, Marcus is the guy you play as, but it doesn't have to be Marcus for the rest of the game. State of Decay's most unique feature is that you can swap between multiple different survivors, all with different stats, special abilities, strengths and weaknesses, which makes each one polarising to the last. Though honestly, Marcus is the best, so you should probably play him all the time. The strengths and weaknesses of each character also means that you have to play some of them differently, as while you could go in guns blazing with one character, you may have to use more melee attacks with another. Characters past habits also have an effect on their usefulness in certain situations. This sorry bastard was an alcoholic before the outbreak, which means his stamina isn't the greatest, which nearly led to his death, but luckily he was able to cheat death by simply being too much of a chad. Performing different activities in the world also grants the survivor you are currently playing as XP, which can improve the rating of that specific aspect in that character. This this again encourages you to switch up your character every now and then, to make sure you have at least a few powered up survivors. Undead Labs must have known that some players will probably linger on certain survivors more than others, so to combat this issue, they made it so exploring with a character for a long period of time will gradually decrease that overall stamina, and the only way you can gain it back is if you swap them out for another character. Turning one of these guys into the perfect organism can be tempting, as why would you want to play as a weak new guy when you can play as a full on zombie killer? Well, problems arise if that particular character you've been building up dies. This is one of the more unforgiving mechanics in the game, as it can potentially ruin your playthrough if your prodigy child dies. You can't find loot and strut about the town without coming into contact with zombies, so at some point you're going to have to fight, and you do that with loads of guns, melee weapons, and car doors. From the outside, State of Decay's combat may come across as brainless no pun intended, as often you find yourself wailing on a zombie's head by spamming the attack button, but doing this all the time isn't a very effective strategy, and neither is just blasting them all away in a frenzy of bullets. Melee weapons use a bit of stamina each time you swing one, and the heavier one is, the more it takes out of you. Guns are equally dangerous because some make huge amounts of noise. Okay, so what are you supposed to do then? Just stand there and watch your friends get ripped in half? Obviously not, but it's wise to try and mix up the way you fight, as stamina and bullets are vital to your survival. There are also other tools you can use to turn the tide in combat, like molotovs and grenades that can help thin out hordes, as well as other tools that help lower your chances of having to fight, like flares and egg timers that distract the zombies. If you are in doubt though, just grab the nearest car and run over the ever-living shit out of them. Zombie heroes don't start out famous, they've got to work their way up the pecking order, and that's the case for you and your playable survivors. Completing missions and performing side tasks like rescuing neighbouring survivor camps, clearing out infestations, bringing back resources and consumables, and escorting allies back to home base gives the player influence points. Like actual physical resources, influence points are very valuable as they grant you access to a variety of perks that benefit you greatly in the game. Your safe house has a storage locker that you can dip your greedy little hands into if you so please. The locker contains meds, food, bullets and weapons, but taking these items will cost you influence points. It's probably the most important resource in State of Decay, because you need ample amounts of it to do anything. Creating outposts and upgrading your base costs lots of influence, so it's best to think carefully before pushing the button. If you find yourself in a situation where you find too many resources to bring back by yourself, then you can call a scavenger to come and pick them up for you, which on paper sounds great, but given how stupid and slow a lot of these guys are, you may only end up using this feature once, then never use it again. Influence can also be used to buy more beneficial and interesting perks, like calling for a SWAT team escort, or even an airstrike. State of Decay's world is littered with hundreds of zombies that range in ferocity and danger level. Most of the time you will run into the standard ones. On their own, these 
these guys go down easily. A few melee hits or a bullet should do the job, but you'll rarely ever find a moment where you just interact with one or two zombies, because their friends are usually just around the corner. Often while traversing around the valley, you will come across hordes patrolling through neighbourhoods and wandering along roads. On your own, they are incredibly dangerous, as if they catch wind of where you are, they will stop at nothing to reach you. However, if you're in a car, it's a completely different story. Suddenly, these big groups don't seem so scary, but the car life hack isn't too effective when it comes to the rarer, more deadly zombie variants, known as freaks. Freaks are the main characters of the zombie world. Each freak type has a particular role to play to keep the player on their toes. None of these freaks have anything on the feral though. Ferals are one of the scariest special infected types I've seen in a zombie game, right up there with tanks, volatiles, and disco zombies. They are essentially rabid dogs, as they chase you down at inhuman speeds and deal heavy damage. It's actually probably better if you engage these things in melee combat, because missing even just one bullet on a feral means you're waving goodbye to half your health bar or even half your torso. State of Decay's gameplay is what you stay for. Combat is brutal, exciting and satisfying, and there's tons of different combinations to the way you fight infected. I enjoyed almost every aspect of it, but there's those mechanics that really don't sit well with me. Like stealth for example. Stealth in this game is tedious, and what's even worse is that it feels useless most of the time. There are a few occasions where you will need stealth, but it seems that no matter what you do, zombies will find you regardless of you doing your best impression of Solid Snake. State of Decay's gameplay loop has a lot going for it that keeps it interesting, but there are still those elements that begin to make it feel repetitive. These things tend to distract you from the actual good parts of State of Decay, and although the game lets you ignore them, they have dire consequences if you choose to do so. The survivors in the game unfortunately have emotions. I know, it's pretty annoying. A lot of them can't handle the fact that, you know, their homes are gone, their families are dead, and that there are now thousands of rotting cannibals surrounding them at any one time. Survivors with strong negative personality traits will flip out from time to time, and will need you to help them take their mind off the zombies, which you do by taking them outside to kill zombies. You expect it to happen now and then, but I found it constantly happening throughout my playthrough, and it starts to feel like it's there just to pad out the runtime of the game, and again, ignoring it can lead to you losing that specific survivor that's pissed off. Sometimes survivors will even wander outside by themselves to hunt for freaks. You can of course join them on these hunts, but after maybe 4 or 5, it may feel like that's enough, but if you decide to leave these guys to their own devices, there's a good chance they'll just wind up dead. It feels like you would be more successful if everyone else just stayed at the base, and you just did your own thing, because some of them struggle to walk 10 feet in front of themselves. Most of the side quests are basically you cleaning up after the brain dead AI, as it tries its hardest to make you stay in the valley of living hell. This is where the sandbox gameplay loop kind of damages the game in a way, because once you get far enough into the game, you realise that you just want to get it over and done with. Choice is also teased as being a big part of State of Decay's DNA, but it doesn't develop this idea, and this really could have made the game that much more interesting and less predictable. You are given a lot of inconsequential choices, like where you set up your base and where you can loot, but the game tries to make it feel like you have other, more important choices that affect the narrative. Meet Alan. He's a bit of a prick, as he stands in as the standoffish, no-nonsense character that is always itching to stomp their authority onto other survivors. He shows his ruthless nature when he executes a priest, who might be infected with the virus currently turning people into zombies. A little bit weird when he saw Ed, who was bitten to shit by a zombie, make a full recovery. Karma is a bitch though, as Alan becomes sick less than a day later, and we as the player are left to make the hard decision on whether or not to execute him. Obviously, it took me a long time to decide on what I would do with Alan, but I ultimately made the tough call. Having survivors come back to your base potentially infected would have made the recruit and exile mechanic that much more crucial to your success, but nothing like this ever happens in the game again. The only other really noticeable form of choice narratively comes on a side quest when you can decide to tell a guy about the past life of a girl he's trying to smash, but it seems so random to have this feature only appear on a meaningless side quest. These small choices feel more like an illusion of choice, like what you find in Telltale games as ultimately choices in most of those games lead to the same result eventually. The game also gets really repetitive thanks to there being little to no personality between most of the characters. The playable characters in this game have no personality or differentiating characteristics between them. Some of them do initially, like Marcus, Ed and Maya, but once the first act of the game is done, each playable character shares the same dialogue and personality, essentially coming across as a hive mind rather than a group of individuals. Found this while I was out. Mm, what you got? Oh, you know, stuff. Mm, what you got? Oh, you know, some stuff. What you got? Oh, you know, stuff. Mm, what you got? Oh, you know, stuff. It also doesn't help that there's little to no variation with dialogue, and every time you have to deal with someone's bullshit, or bring back supplies, or even get an update in the world, characters will say exactly the same thing every single time. Have you got the?
State of Decay is at its best when you are just pissing about exploring, looting and killing zombies. The less you have to think about, the better your experience will be. And despite its annoying habits, the first State of Decay is still a very good game. And Undead Labs were onto something great when they crafted this little underrated gem. And after all of your hard work, some of your survivors get together to leave the valley. I guess most of them preferred being in a town with poisoned water and depleting supplies. And after the barricade keeping the survivors imprisoned is destroyed, they are reinstated back into a normal civilization. Are they fuck? Everything's gone to shit. Time for State of Decay 2, baby. Let's go.